Um, okay, now I want to get what is Volk Rehab? Um, we are a state federal funded program, 80% from the feds, 20% from the state. We are an employment program. We are here to help you all find folks with disabilities that meet your employment needs, that have qualifications, and to help you in the whole recruiting process, the selection process, and the retention process. Um, our, okay. Um, Kim Peck, who is our director, really has a vision. And her vision is collaboration. Uh, that's one of the reasons we love to come to things like this, because we are so much stronger if we work together. This is, this is a huge issue, trying to get folks with disabilities employment. And Carol's talked about the numbers. You just look at the st statistical numbers. So we need each other. Uh, to really accomplish that, that vision. We know with the political environment, the resources out there, that we need to collaborate and really work together. It is a societal issue getting people with disabilities employed. Uh, as you would say in the trades, we got way too many people on the bench. We need to get those folks back to work. And the quality of life that people have when they're working is so much better. We're a voluntary program, and I think that's one thing that differentiates us from like workman's compensation, so those kind of things, um, is that um, people come to us because they want to work. And that is huge. Attitude, attitude, attitude. When I think about folks with disabilities over working 30 years of people with disabilities, if I had one predictor as far as what, what's going to be the determining fact that they're getting employed, they want to work. I can work with all the other kind of issues, all the other kind of accommodations, all the other kind of things, but do they want to work? Um, in um, 2011, we worked with over 20,000 individuals. Um, and really, we look, the strength of rehab services is it's a one-on-one. -on -one. We sit down with you and go, what are your interests, your strengths, your limitations, and really develop a plan with that individual as far as how we're going to meet with them to, to reach their goals. Um, we have right now, we're, we, I was looking at the, some of the numbers, we have 2,431 people that are ready for employment statewide. We got that many people who want to work. We got 2,540 that we have in a training program. Uh, and, and that could be colleges. We got two of them over here. I'm going to get to you guys. This week, um, but um, the training programs, things to, to get them the skills that are going to be um, you needed by business. Um, many times in government, since a lot of us are in government, um, what I hear a lot is, "Well, we can't do that." You know, we, we, we you know, the person applies for the job, they get an interview, and they get hired. Many times, people with disabilities are never going to bubble up in the, that whole process. Um, so how do we structure within the entities that we're working, um, making people so they have an opportunity to be successful, I, I think is, is one of the, the keys. Uh, and I'm going to talk about a couple of programs that we've done. Um, but not quite yet. <laughs> well, the strength of uh, VR is understanding our candidates' interests, skills, challenges, and matching them up with business. Return on investment. We recently did a study with VR dollars, and for every dollar we spent, we got nine dollars back. Man, if I'm a bet man going to the casino, that's pretty cool odds. And as taxpayers, that's why we need to work with businesses like Cliff over here and really get that return on investment. Um, we need to really partner both their community rehab programs and businesses to make this work because it's good for all of us. Um, I think, you know, really trying to take the dis of disability and focus this thing on the, that uh, ability piece. Um, I was just at a presentation <coughs> with uh, uh, Judge Frank um, the other day, and that's why I have some of this stuff in my head. But he made a comment that, that really just struck me, and actually it was a quote from Martin Luther King. In the end, we will not be remembered by the words of our enemies, but by the silence of our friends. 
So I challenge you all that you don't want to be silent. You, it, it needs to be a focused, active plan to really get people with disability employed. How can partners, um, how can businesses partner with local services? Um, one call starts the process. I'm going to give you all Marina Marcy's number back to me. Oh, that no. Um, it's really uh, one of our focuses, and we would love to meet with every one of the organizations that are represented here. We want to understand what your business needs are. What are the barriers that you have in your different organizations? How can we leverage our talent pool and really get folks in the door? I don't want window dressing. I'm not talking about compliance. We have the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law is getting people employed. Um, we're really trying to work on a single point of contact because that makes a lot of sense for businesses to really have the, that, that piece. And then you can have someone who has some expertise with you. We listen to your employment needs, and we tap into our networks and our community partners. Um, I think um, we work with uh, 172 different community partners, I believe. And we can get the word out for a job lead exponentially. Um, they get really sick of seeing my name because I might send 15 job leads a day um, out and really um, trying to get back. Um, great success story. Um, um, federal government. Um, anybody ever do the federal government? Try to get in the federal government or in the federal government? Okay. We, we got one person that shyly raised her hand. Um, they have what's called a Schedule A process, which is an expedited process for people with disabilities. We got a job lead from them. Um, typically, the federal government takes five months to get in. Uh, we got seven candidates that interviewed at the USDA at the Butler Square, and in six weeks we had four people start on Monday. Phenomenal. And that came from all the different resources, and partly because we knew what they needed for employees. Okay. How to partner with Wolf Rehab. Um, we will identify pre screen and refer candidates who meet your employment needs. Um, when a job offer is made, we provide retention supports if you need to ensure um, that they're going to be successful. We don't go away. We really want to have that continuity. There's literally businesses that I haven't dealt with for 12 years, and I'll get a call from someone that I worked with, and that's probably just because I'm old and then my name's still out there. But hey, I don't know. But uh, both we have services in the state of Minnesota. Um, when you talk about government processes, um, there's many different entry points in the government process. You have the resume system, straightforward. Unclassified positions don't need to be put in the resume. It's temporary positions, 45-day positions. So if you get three components, one, um, the head, uh, and I'm going to talk about the um, um, Minneapolis Department of Transportation. Um, Commissioner Sorrell has been a huge supporter of working with people with disabilities. Two HR, um, two people at, at MnDOT, um, Eric Davis and Emma Curry really uh, spearheaded work with people. And then three, the line managers. And get those three within any organization. And you really need that combination to really move things forward. Okay, and I know I'm running out of time. Uh, SEEDS program is um, a MINDAP program. Four years ago, uh, SEEDS is not an acronym. It's Grow Your Own Talent. Meredith Biddle and Christine Jordanby are both in that program. Phenomenal people. Um, both individuals who um, um, balance an internship uh, and going to school and all the life issues that, that, that we have. But they are really getting groomed for what their future is going to be. And, and, um, and really having that transparency. So, positions at MINDA. Um, so over the course of four years, we have uh, really identified specific needs of MINDA in relation to people we were working with, what their needs were. And these are the kind of folks that we have. Oh, that was cool. Um, <laughs> um, we've got civil engineers, we've got people in finance, we have snowplow drivers, we have architects, we have people in civil rights, facility serving, um, photogrammography. Uh, I don't know if I said that right, but an office specialist. The reality is folks with disability have all different kinds of abilities and skills and really trying to, to maximize those. Um, I really would like to challenge you. 
let's put the mojo in getting folks with disabilities jobs and really sitting down and seeing what your needs are and we truly are happy to come up and meet with you all and many times I will say that we, we need to suit up and really do this um, I have been noted for uh, someone goes, well, how are you doing today? I said, I'm living the dream. I'm a public servant. <laughs> and I truly believe that 90% of the time, 10% of the time, I might be a little tongue-in-cheek. Um, but uh, I think we have the opportunity to really change people's lives. And one final thought. Um, and I, I just love this saying, and I, I think it's really where we're at. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits. The tibbles, the troublemakers, the round heads in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules. They have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or unite with them. But the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They pull the human race forward. And while some may see them as crazy ones, some see them as geniuses. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. Thank you.